HPV. This is human papilloma virus that causes genital warts. Uh, we have warts on the skin. We have cervical cancer. You're going to get some more information about this. But one thing you have to understand is we don't have a cure for most of the viral infections that we have. So viruses, the only thing that we do is we treat the symptoms or reduce how, how much they are replicating so that your immunity can take over and uh, subdue the viruses. HPV causes genital arts. It can affect so many parts of your body. Now we have several subtypes of HPV, meaning that we have, no, they are all HPV, but we have subgroups. We have several groups within them. So there are so many, there are over a hundred. But uh, very few of them usually cause uh, infections that we can see. Now, out of the so many, more than 100, we have 30 strains that can uh, target your genitals, including the vulva, the vagina, the cervix, the penis, we have the scrotum, the rectum, and the anus. So they can target them and cause those warts that you usually see. Even the skin on your hands, your feet, and even your face. The only one that we are afraid of is the one that usually causes the cervical cancer. But for those that usually cause uh, genital warts, uh, or the warts on your skin, maybe on your face, you don't actually need to worry about them. Unless maybe you're worried about the cosmetics, so you'll have to have maybe that removed. But uh, like we said, once you have that virus, you already have that virus with you forever. So it will just depend on your immunity to fight that thing forever. Um, when you become immunocompromised a little bit, they will come back. But um, one thing and one good about them is because you are immunocompetent, your body will fight them off. They will disappear. They, they will just go. But in case they are not going, we have several procedures which are physical. You remove that uh, lesion that you have on top of your skin physically and uh, hopefully that, that thing will not come back. How do you spread this infection? Skin to skin contact. In case maybe whoever you are in contact with already have that infection, they can be able to transmit that to you. Now, we have sexual activities where if you uh, exchange uh, the body fluids, you are going to get that infection. But um, maybe on top of your skin, you have that lesion and you so decide to break it up. If you break it and that fluid go to someone, they'll be infected. Also, the same fluid, if it goes to another point on your skin, it's going to also cause that lesion there. So you're going to have another what? because you broke uh, whatever you had there. So in case you have that, don't break it. You can just let your immunity work on uh, on that until it fights that thing off and then it will just disappear on its own. Unless it's huge such that uh, you need to uh, go for physical removal. If they are tiny, you just don't need to worry about them. You just let them be, they'll just go. Now, many people usually associate uh, HPV infection or the words uh, to sexually transmitted infections. But most genital HPV strains are the harmless. They cause no symptoms at all. Even those that usually cause the genital warts fall in this category. So they'll be there, yes, physically you look ugly, yes, but they are not harmless. They do, do not do something bad with your, with your health, apart from now the physical appearance. Now let's narrow down to the strains which are now dangerous and they have a potential of causing illnesses like cervical cancer. Now we have strain number 16 and number 18. They can lead to cervical cancer. And, uh, they lead to cervical dysplasia, which is a precursor to cervical cancer. This is where early detection of this virus is very essential, it's very important because now treatment will uh, prevent you from proceeding to cervical cancer. There is a very, very high correlation between these strains of um, the HPV to you getting cervical cancer later in life. And cancer, you definitely know it's not a good thing to have. The impact varies between genders because we see females usually suffer more because of the presence of uh, what we've mentioned right now. Uh, they have cervix and it's one of the most affected regions. So men are less likely uh, to get this infection or they have a less potential of getting the cervical cancer, but there is still a potential of them getting this, but it's only that it's low. More often, genital HPV does not show any symptoms or even any sign. Um, but when she does, it shows the warts, which is a common sight. So you'll know that you have that when you have uh, the warts on your skin, maybe genital warts, maybe warts on your skin, on your face, on your legs, any point that you have um, the skin, 
you can get those warts. But uh, we have the high risks HPV, the 16 and 18, like we saw earlier, that can lead to cancerous changes that will go up unnoticed for a really long period of time until later stages. So that's why screening is very important, like pap smear. And uh, we also have HPV lab tests, like uh, we have PCR tests for this. Uh, they're very crucial for early detection because when we detect this early, treatments are there. We can get treatments that will um, make sure that you don't get that uh, cervical cancer or any kind of a cancer that will come from uh, this HPV. Treating HPV involves removing the visible warts and uh, the abnormal cells in your body. Now, we have various methods like cryosurgery whereby um, they freeze a certain part of your body, that part of the body will be removed uh, through scaling or maybe just it will peel off. We have laser, laser, laser therapy that will help also in, in removing the cells which are infected or maybe the lesion which is infected, mostly on top of your skin. But remember, treatments cannot remove this virus completely from your body, but your immunity will be what you'll be uh, relying on. So your immunity will suppress this thing forever until maybe you become immunosuppressed or maybe your immunity is not working anymore. So that's the point when this thing will come back again. But so long as you are immunocompetent, it's not a worry. But prevention is the key. Now, we have a vaccine for HPV, like uh, we have Gardasil. Now, this Gardasil will prevent you from getting this infection. But you'll have to be tested fast so that uh, when they're giving you this, you already don't have this infection. So it's good to just go and inquire, especially ladies, go and inquire whether you can have that vaccine. And uh, they're going to test you and give you this vaccine. It will protect you. For those who are under 30 years, HPV infection can often clear itself. So it can just disappear on its own because of your immunity. But you need to have regular screening and safer sex practices. Living with HPV does not mean it's a life sentence. Your immunity, like we mentioned, is a means to here. It will be a friend. It will just clear this thing forever. It will keep uh, beating this thing. And you might even never even notice that you have this because your immunity will do a very good job of this. And there you have it. So um, HPV is very common and uh, most infections will not lead to cancer. But then always make sure you have regular screening for the same, especially ladies. And vaccine vaccinations are there. They'll help in prevention of getting this infection and at the same time indirectly prevent you from getting the cancer, the cervical cancer we are talking about.